What you've seen so far is a very small subset of JavaScript programming language. But now let's think if we could perhaps implement it using what we've learned, the formalism that we've learned, the lambda calculus. Okay, so what would we need? Well, we would need a way to create an empty object. We would need a way to access a field of an object, which is the dot notation, right? We would need a way to assign a value to an object, which is, we use this notation. It's just an assignment, so it's object.field equals value. We would need a way to call a function, which is this notation. For simplicity, we're assuming uh, all functions only have one um, parameter. So our, all function calls only have one argument. And then we have a lambda, which is a function def declaration. So lambda JS, the way we're defining it is just this. So you have a, a what, object creation, field lookup, field declaration, function call, and function declaration. Okay. So what are our runtime values and how do how what is the semantics for this? So this would be the core language of Lambda JS. Okay, so runtime values, we will need uh, two things, right? We need functions or closures, right? The runtime value of a function declaration is a closure and also objects, right? Because we are creating them. So those are the two things we're going to need. So these are the two only two values we have. So then how would we define the operational semantics? Well, we take homework four, if you recall, uh, homework four. Yes, homework four, right. Uh, so basic lambda calculus. So these are all the rules that we've learned before uh, of lambda E, right? So it says here. Uh, the only thing we do, so this we take just to be able to operate on functions. So we need all these four rules to be able to handle functions and closures. Now the novelty is handling objects themselves. So for now, we're going to consider objects just as a plain dictionary. So what we have here, we're saying when we create an object, what we do is we define a certain object value such that for all keys, the return looking up the value of, of that object is undefined. So if, if I have any key, its value is going to be undefined, right? So you can think of it as you know, a, a map whose default value is undef, right? Whenever you look up, if the if you haven't set anything, you get undef back. So this is just a mathematical way or notation for that behavior. Another way could be whenever you do a get, if the key is not in the object, you return undef. So that's another way to represent it. Um, second thing you need is looking up. So whenever you do object and you're looking up a field what you do is you evaluate the object you evaluate the field um, the field has to be a string and then what you do you return you look up that string key right because you can have any expression in the lookup in the bracket right so if you go back to this code uh, i could have um right? Uh, this is an expression where I'm concatenating the empty string with the string y and it should still work, right? Uh, so this field, whatever using in the field lookup, needs to be evaluated. So that's what we have here in, the, in this part, in the green part. Uh, and of course, the object in this case is a variable. And as you know, variables are evaluated. They are expressions, so they need to be evaluated as well. The result is going to be a, an, on the left hand side, you have to have an object, right? And then in the lookup side, you have to have a string, which we represent with S. So setting an object is uh, very simple. So you evaluate the object expression and you get an object, you evaluate the field and you get a string. And then what do you do? You evaluate the value they're assigning to that object, which is V, EV. And that gives you some value, could be anything. Uh, and then what we do is we update that object and a set uh, the string s as the key and the value v as, as assigned to s, right? So think about object the hash uh, set 
function, right? Which updates the hash table. And think of the object just really as a basic uh, hash table. So you could define the terms with this AST, the values with this AST. We can go slowly through it and you can see it's pretty obvious. Hopefully by now you will, you will be able to do this. Just note that an object O is just something that holds a hash. So this data is going to be a hash table, right? For the keys and the values. Uh, and then the expressions, they're all, uh, I use the J colon notation. Um, for all the expressions. And then in the next lesson, what we're going to learn is the object system, which we haven't covered yet. So how do you inherit a class and all that? So for now, I just wanted to cover the basics. What I've learned, what, what, what is new here is really just formalizing operations on basically a dictionary, right? Where you're updating, uh, where you're reading, and where you're initializing this map. Okay. We're actually not going to implement this, these rules. In this module, what we're, we're going to learn is really a compiler. So we are given an implementation of these rules, but you need to understand what's going on, hopefully. So that is it. I hope you have a good weekend. I hope you had fun today and that you are to become JavaScript experts. <laughs>